So this is going to be uh, video number one in a series of videos, instructional videos on this new tool that's coming out, the impedance meter signal generator. Um, so in this video, we're going to show how to use this tool to obtain all the field small parameters for a for a driver. So in case you have a driver and you don't know all the, all the field small parameters for it, you need those parameters when you're trying to design a, a box for your subs, you need those parameters. So, uh, you know, maybe you don't have them or maybe you don't trust the ones that came with the woofer, which I wouldn't if I were you. They're always, it seems like they're typically off by 20% or so. And in some box designs, that'll make a huge difference and create a huge problem. So. The, solution to that problem is to measure the specs of your actual woofer that you're using and design around that. So that's what we're going to show. So um, we've developed this right now it's in a spreadsheet form. It's going to guide us through how to do it. This is also going to become an app, uh, a mobile app. So uh, I'll just go ahead and start it here. It says enter the diameter of the cone from center of the surround to center of the surround. So looking at the woofer here, center of surround to center of surround would be from here, here to center of the surround. So we're going to say 6.5 inches. Hard to see on video here but it's uh, 6.5 inches. So, into that, 6.5. And now it says, measure the DC resistance of the driver and enter it here. So for this part, you do need an additional piece of equipment. You need a, a fluke meter or some kind of a digital volt ohm meter. So we're just gonna put it in here and measure it. now. Notice, if I'm making a lot of noise or if I'm touching the woofer, this thing's going to be jumping all around or maybe if the, a fan is blowing on it too hard. So this needs to be done in a room that's not loud and doesn't have a bunch of air blowing around and the speaker has to be on some kind of a solid surface. So all those things need to be in place for this to happen. So this thing says 3.26, but we didn't calibrate the probes of the meter. So let's do that here. See, so these probes themselves are are uh, 120 milliohms. So you can just subtract that to your answer, or on this meter it has a little special button we can push to zero it. All right, and we're going to get this number. It's very important to be accurate with these numbers because it's the whole point of this. 3.16. So we enter that into our spreadsheet. 3.16. And now it wants us to. Turn on the IMSG, which is our tool, the impedance meter. Connect the harness to it, short the alligator clips together, and we're going to zero this tool out in the software. So it goes through this little procedure, checks the battery. Okay, so here, we're going to put the probe in. And it says it's open right now because they're not connected to anything. I'm going to short these together. Wait for it to, to settle when you on this part it takes it takes a minute. 0.04 or 0 0.4. So we put that in. Oh, it settled to 0 0.3. 0 0.3. Plug that in to the spreadsheet. Now it says to, with the IMSG, find the frequency of the driver where the impedance reaches its maximum. So, now that we're about to hook up the IMSG to the woofer, there's something we have to do here. On this, like on this woofer here, the, it's got a vented pull piece, uh, you know, out the back of the magnet. So, if I set it on the surface, it's going to plug off that hole. So, that's, you can't do that because it's not how it's going to be used. So, I'm just going to prop it up here on on these other tools that make nice props too for this. There, so now the, now the hole can breathe. Okay, so we connect our leads.
and it says find the frequency of the driver where the impedance reaches its maximum. So I'm going to just turn the frequency knob and I'm, the impedance is on the bottom, frequency is on top. So we're looking for the maximum. So I went past it, so I'm going to go backwards looking for the highest reading. I think it was 17.5 I just saw. Seventeen point four. Okay, that's about as good as that, as close as we can get. So twenty-seven point four hertz. So I'm gonna enter that in here. Twenty-seven point four hertz. Yep. Okay, and now it wants us to enter the impedance that was found at that frequency. So if you look back at the tool, we can see that at that frequency the impedance is seventeen point. 4 ohms. So we're going to enter that. 17.4. Okay. Now we're going to have to go into the next step. But just as a side note, real quick, if we look over here at this monitor here, this is in, in the impedance curve of this woofer. And so what we just found is this point. We measured DC with the volt ohm meter, which was off the scale. It's down here. That was our three point one something and then now we just found this point and so now we're going to try to find a point in here and a point in here so that we know what the shape of this looks like so it says here step six with the IMSG lower the frequency slowly until it reads 7.7 .7 ohms so we're going to go down until we get to 7.7 .7 ohms there it is. Frequency is 17.4 hertz. It wants us to enter that right here. 17.4. Okay. Now with the IMSG, raise the frequency slowly until it reads 7.7. .7. So you see on this graph here what happened. We found this. We lowered the frequency until we found 7.7 .7 ohms, which was here. And now we're going to raise the frequency back up and try to find 7.7 .7 ohms on this side. That's what we're doing now. So raise the frequency for 7.7 .7 ohms on the other side of the curve. There we are. 45.3 hertz. So we enter that in. 45.3 hertz. This is probably the most complicated step of all here. It says enter a known mass or add a known mass to the cone and then find uh, the frequency at which it has the maximum impedance. So if you look at this graph over here what we're about to do is we're going to add some weight to the cone of the speaker and what happens when you do that is this whole thing is going to shift this way. So we're going to add some amount of weight and then we're going to find where this shifted to. We need that piece of data to calculate the rest of these parameters. So for a known weight, a, a really good thing to use is Play-Doh because um, our tool has a pretty large output on the, you know, output to the speaker. So it will make the, the speaker um, move up and down quite a bit. So if you put, you know, anything hard on here like I used to use nickels to do this because they're five grams each and it makes this real handy you put 10 nickels it's 50 grams and you know but with our tool it moves enough so that they're going to be rattling and that can't happen that'll mess up your results so whatever you use for a mass needs to not rattle it can be like a sandbag or something but like I said I like I like play-doh so I'm going to weigh out this piece of, of play-doh here so I can see what I'm doing 65.6 grams is what we're going to be using. So I'm going to take this and just kind of make it into a shape that I can get on here. Kind of all around. Smash it down pretty hard on here because you don't want it vibrating. Okay. Now we find the new peak in this impedance curve. Okay, so we're, we're trying to find this new frequency peak with the weight added to the speaker.
the mass added. Looks like we're right in here. I saw 15 and a half or so. Right there, so they're going to be our new one. So 19.9 hertz is what we want to put in here. This is enter the frequency 19.9. Okay, now it says enter the weight of the mass used. And we, we weighed it out, it was like uh, 65 and a half grams. And bam, there it is, done. So there are all of the feel small parameters for this exact driver right here. Using Taking these numbers, you can plug them into any, you know, your favorite box building program and be able to design a, uh, an enclosure that is exactly for this, this driver. You know, if you had a two, two driver system, you would measure both of your speakers and then just average the numbers for each and use that. Um, when we start sewing our woofers, they're going to be tested. Each, each woofer will be tested and it will come with the, the data for it instead of coming with the random specs. But uh, there you go. That's video number one in the series. We're going to make a bunch more showing different uses for this tool.